Very well, we're going to talk about post-modernism. Who here already heard about this? Oh, great. Who here never heard about it? So this is going to be easy. When God created man, where was man put in? in the garden called the Garden of Eden. Do you know what the word Eden means? Pleasure. God put man in pleasure. There, man had all of his needs supplied. He didn't need anything else. He had God's presence. He had everything he needed to live. But man fell, sinned, was expelled from pleasure, and David, as David said, he had to start to work to gain bread, and he had to sweat, and he had to fulfill his own needs. And with this, man began to do many things to continue to live. He needed safety, he needed food, he needed living, <coughs> a place to live, he needed joy. So, man started to build a culture without God because he lost the presence of God. So this then gave birth to the world. So the world is a system The world is a system called cosmos that was built to replace God, to replace God in the supply of man's need, man, the need of man. What the world says is, you don't need God. You want safety? I'll give you safety. Do you want supply? I'll give you this supply. Do you want joy? It's okay, I'll give you joy. So, all of the needs that man had, and God could supply the world, built a system, Satan built a system to replace God. So, this is cosmos. Another word that exists for the world is Aion, which means the course, world, or the century. So, Ephesians 2.2 says, you once walked according to the course of this world. Galatians talks about this world and Romans says not to be conformed to this world. This word is ayon. It is the course of this world. It is a period of time inside of history that there are certain characteristics and is considered a segment of the world. So, this, these segments in history had names. So you had the old times, the, the Middle Age, and so forth. And studies, the, the historians say that we are in a period in which the thoughts are called 
postmodernists. So for us to understand what is postmodernism, first we need to understand what is modernism. Let us take a look here. The difference between pre-modernism and modernism. Pre-modernism was in the medieval ages. At that time, what would happen is that people would believe in the supernatural. And when there was lots of mysticism or faith, they had lots of influence from Catholicism, so all of the Western world knew this matter of the original sin and of being under the will of God. And they were also altruistic. That means they would think on others, not so much on themselves. And the way the politi the political system was feudalism. You all saw this in history, I hope. From century 18, <coughs> from the 18th century on, came modernism. So instead of what was supernatural, no, let us focus on what is natural. And instead of mysticism or faith, no, let us be more objective. Let us use our reason, not faith, reason. Let us think, let us reason. Then, instead of sin and being under God's will, no, let us build our own knowledge, let us develop our knowledge. It was, this was a century in which many discoveries were made. And besides that, instead of thinking on others, let us think on ourselves, in the individual, the right of the individuals, not just other people's rights, but my rights. I have rights for this. And also, capitalism showed up, which probably came from the Jewish people, right, Lawrence? Very well. The vision of Illumin Illuminism was, from reason, there is individualism and science. From individualism, you have liberalism, liberty, and also, there's capitalism. From science, we have engineering. Engineering began to become very well developed, and also medicine. Liberalism produced liberty. Capitalism produced riches. Engineering produced lots of material goods and medicine produced health and well-being. And all of this then produced progress, comfort, and joy, happiness. And then we were born. We were born in the time of progress, comfort, and the pursuit of happiness. So, everything that the world wants from reason is to improve science, to improve things, so that we may have liberty, riches, material goods, health, well-being, and that way we have progress, comfort, and happiness. Who needs God? If we have all of this, why do we need God? And all of this comes from reason, comes from human thoughts, from reasoning, from logic. So you don't need to pay attention to God. Human beings can do lots of things. We can go to the moon. And we did that. Well, there's an author called Abraham Maslow 
who invented, he, he recorded human needs from the lowest ones, which are the physiological needs, to the highest ones, which are self uh, fulfillment. So, in the beginning, there are lots of things, uh, physiological needs and protection, then family, health, and after you want more things as, as friendships and uh, sexual intimacy, and then uh, self-esteem, uh, self-confidence, uh, conquers, victories, respect, and up on top of the pyramid, you have other things moral, creativity, and other things I can't read. Well, you can see all this. So, once you fulfilled the basic needs, you can go to the next level. I didn't have where I could live. I didn't have clothes to wear. I didn't have food to eat. Now that I have all of this, that I got certain things, then I can start to think about higher things like protection of my body, job, resources, health. Now that I have this, then I can start thinking about other things. Once that the lower levels were built, I start to think about other things. And this and this opens space to other things as unhappiness, uh, frustration, and satisfaction, depression, why? Because before I would fight for food. Now that I have food, I have a house, I have all of this that, that I attained with my hands, with my work. Then now, I start to have needs, more abstract needs. If you visit countries of the third world, we don't talk about third world countries, but poor countries, there, they're not working about, they're not thinking about, they're not worried about uh, self-realization, fulfillment, fulfillment. No, they're talking, thinking about food, basic needs. We who live in the Western world, that have, we worry about these things. Oh, I'm not happy. Oh, I'm not fulfilled. Oh, I have depression. I, I have this, I have that. Why? Because the refrigerator has food. I have clothes. I have an iPod. I have a smartphone. <coughs> so, the more things I have, the more unsatisfied they become. Why? Because way in Adam, I lost pleasure. Can you understand this? Adam was in pleasure, but he was cast out of pleasure. So it doesn't matter what he did, I will... No, no, no matter what I do, I'll never be satisfied. Never. Next, since we compared pre-modernism to modernism, now let us compare modernism to post-modernism, which is now at the end of the 20th century, beginning of the 21st century. So if before it was naturalism, now it is anti-realism. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about this because it's not worth it now, but instead of naturalism, we have anti-realism, instead of objectivism, we have subjectivism, moral or social subjectivism, instead of building knowledge, we build society, instead of individualism, we build collectivism and egalitarianism and many other isms that are not the case. Why did man start worry about so many abstract, abstract things? Because now the concrete needs were already fulfilled. 
So in satisfaction, that was not because of food. It is not because of clothes. It is because of higher, more abstract levels. They continue unhappy, but because of other things. So what is the characteristic of postmodernism? One is that there is not a correct way of reading nature or a text. Every time you read it, you can interpret it in any way. There is no correct way. All interpretations are correct, are valid. And values and ethics are socially subjective. Culturally, the value of no group is higher or more special. So now what, what's valid is not the final word. Before it was the word of the church. But then after came uh, reason, uh, science, cure. Now none of this is the, f the final word. Now what is valid is what a group understands. And there's no group better than another group. You are a group. I have my group. You think this way, I think another way. Your group is 100% correct, even though it's against what I think, but I'm also 100% correct. You have your right of thinking the way you want to, and I have the right of thinking the way I want to. And none of us are wrong. <coughs> so if I create a group of vandals, and I think that vandalism is correct, I have the right to do that. And if you create a group of assassins, no problem. You also are correct. You have the right to think the way you think and to do whatever you want to do. Why? Because reason is no longer important. Everything that I used to build society in the past, I want to destroy so that I can focus the individual or the group. Then came the rights of the minority. You need to be more sensitive about what others want and their styles of life. This seems to be very logical. You need to think and give value to minorities and what others think. And then came the politically correct. What is politically correct? It is a supposedly... Uh, uh, <coughs> politically correct consists in having a neutral language concerning discrimination and to avoid terms that can be offensive to certain groups like a racist or a sexist language. So because of others, I need to be careful with what I say. This seems to be very logical, right? Yes, it is logical. But this became a dictatorship that says, you can't talk about me, but I can talk about you. You can't judge what I think, but I can judge what you think. So then, there are these things now called microaggressions. To ask certain questions are prohibited, like personal questions, gender, race, religion, sexual preference, or using expressions considered, considered pejorative, discriminatory, racist, prejudice. And people started getting offended by anything that you say. And the idea is this. This is the idea. If you say something that offends me, I am right. You are wrong. Anything you say that is against what I think and I feel offended that proves that I am right. 
So today what happens is that we can't many times even say our opinion because if I say something I think and I offend someone, I am in trouble because who is offended is right. This is the thought of postmodernism. And my right ends where the offense, my right ends where the offense begins for the other person. That means I can do anything as long as I don't offend anybody. So if I preach the gospel and I offend someone, that's considered a crime. Even in some places, it's even prohibited to preach the gospel. This is a thought, postmodernist thought, an attitude of postmodernism. The difference of opinions are faced not with reasoning or benefit of doubt or the expectation of reason to prevail, but with with uh, the disposition of re of using strength. So you have a different opinion as mine. Instead of that, instead of me considering that maybe I'm wrong and that maybe you're wrong, right, so let us talk to see. No, I am right, always. And if you are wrong, I am willing to fight with you to show you. If you don't agree with me, I am willing to fight and to show you that I am right and you are wrong. Instead of using my creative energies, look at this. Instead of me using my creative energies to change who I am and adapt myself to society, I use my I use it to change society to accept me the way I am. This this phrase was spoken by a a gay activist. He is not willing to change, but he was willing to change all society so that society would accept him the way he is. This type of thoughts are one of the characteristics of postmodernism. And it's easier to change the community and the society than to change the identity of the individual. It causes less harm. Instead of me exercising my uh, self-control, no, you need to change the way you think and accept me the way I am because there is no clear interpretation of any truth. There is no reason anymore. Everybody is right. Everybody can say and think whatever they want to. So all of these things have produced this that Mari said. Uh, hedonism, what is that? It's the s pursuit of pleasure. Hedonism is the pursuit of pleasure. That means it is the pursuit of Eden. What is man seeking for? Eden. What he lost in Adam. But what is the way to obtain what we lost in Adam? Is it the way the world is doing? No. The only way is through the Lord. He is the way to return to the Eden and to have access to the tree of life. So everything people think is trying to obtain pleasure at any cost, doesn't matter what is the cost. So what they say is about the disconstruction. We need to disconstruct society, disconstruct the way people think to obtain pleasure. There is no way, there is no meaning in talking about in talking about reason, truth, or knowledge. He is one of the main, this person is one of the main uh, philosophers of, of postmodernism. 
Foucault, he, he thinks, oh, we can't fight for reason because nobody has reason. Actually, there is no reasoning. So I'm not going to tr fight with you to find out what is reasoning, what is the truth. Jesus said, he... Jesus said, I am the truth, but he says there is no truth. Foucault also says that reasoning is the definitive language of craziness, of insanity. They also seek for social change. So then there is an incoherence, because before they would defend something, and now they begin to defend others. So in the same way that people would defend that reasoning should prevail over faith, now they are saying, they are fighting to say that reasoning, reason is not valid, truth does not have a foundation, what's important is to seek pleasure. So, the, why most postmodernists are uh, from the left uh, wing and extreme left wing? So, why before they who used modernism uh, to use reasoning and science and righteousness to, for all? Uh, now they use arguments against uh, against reasoning, against science, saying that in love and in war, everything is valid. And what do they say? They say it's a new millennium, a new culture. According to postmodernists, the society of, of Century 21 should get rid of of the Christian culture. We know this, that this new century wants to get rid of the Jewish and Christian culture, which is the Bible. In this society that we live today, you can't use the Bible anymore. The Bible does not have space anymore. The Bible is something, it's backwards, it's full of, full of racism, full of hate and this needs to be eliminated from humanity this is what they defend and we, we need to have tolerance but tolerance here actually means acceptance you shouldn't only tolerate what you need to accept and even promote you tolerate certain uh, something that is uh, undesirable, but for them, tolerance is to accept. If I have a headache, I can tolerate this headache, but I don't accept this headache. So I take providence for this headache to go away. But when they talk about tolerance, they're not talking about tolerance, but they're talking about acceptance. And there was a redefinition of love. Love is the absence of conflict and of con confrontation and all forms of love are valid so this reminds us of what Paul said in 2 Timothy 3 1-4 but know this that in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Paul wrote this about 2,000 years ago, and this describes very well the society in which we live today. Last afternoon in the talk, no, actually, last morning, uh, Marinonio talked to the 
you know, the first of these students, students, he said that every philosopher, every researcher have knowledge of what happened from before until now, but they don't have no idea what's going to happen from now on. But we who know the Bible, we know the word, we know what's going to happen, what's going to come. And we need to hold on to this and to give value to ourselves for this. Don't despise yourself. You who are in college, you who meet other people who think this way, don't be scared by them because they only know what happened until now. But we have revelation about what's going to happen from now on. Paul described the society of the 21st century 2,000 years ago through the revelation of the Spirit. Today we have the Spirit, and the Spirit can give us revelation. So we are not going to conduct ourselves according to what the world dictates or to what society thinks. Our base is the word our identity is of children of god and the way people think should not be our way of thinking we should have the mind of christ so that's it